Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Decently a Decent episode 28. I'm almost positive I didn't double check. Uh, what was that little laugh for those listening and not watching right now? Very excited to be joined this week uh, for the third time, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in 28 episodes by my lovely wife, colleague, and assistant, and caretaker. <laughs> the infamous Mrs. Lush. Thanks for being here, sweetheart. Oh, happy to be here. Yeah, so this is fun for me because, as you guys know, that listen, I like to fire up the mic and speak off the cuff a little bit. We've done some episodes in the past few weeks that have been a little bit more, I don't know what you would call it, a little bit more profound, uh, philosoph uh, excuse me, philosophical a little bit. Not so much philosophical, it's just, um, just speaking to character and just being a little more open and honest just about life in general and... I enjoy doing that, but I also like to just be able to sit next to my wife and drink a little espresso martini and <laughs> chat a little bit. And I do know, um, first of all, I just have to I have to show my appreciation on air for her because it is currently nighttime and we're recording. <laughs> and for any of you that have followed Lush Life through the years, you know that when we started, it used to be back in the day early on, it was always at night after Jax was in bed and she, you know, she worked all day and We'd fire up a couple of martinis and she'd do it. But since then, post kid, it's like doing anything after dinner time when it's time to relax. That's a tall order. That's a tall order. For sure. So I appreciate you being here. And, you know, all the time, anytime we record Lush Life these days for the past couple of years, since we've been here, it's always daytime, like a normal job almost. <laughs> and somehow over the years, it's crept earlier and earlier and earlier. I think we've recently been starting at like 9 30 a.m. 9 30 a.m. <laughs> I usually sleep past then on some yeah. days, but it's just the way the schedules have worked out. And now, you know, with Jackson in school, that gives us uh, an opportunity to do it um, without needing childcare, obviously, which is great. So I'll just, the day that we do it, I'll wake up and get him to school while she gets all dolled up like she likes to do. Gosh. doesn't take much, honestly. She's just... Uh, you know, I like to take a shower. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Scrub the pits. Well, that's the thing. You're already up two hours before. You're working out in the gym, fucking strength training. You probably walked three laps, already have 8,000 steps. You come back. I'm like opening my eyes in bed and you've already done more activity than most people do in a week. And then, yeah, then you shower and get ready. I bring him to school. And then it's like, boom, I stop at Starbucks, pick up some drinks, and we go home and record a couple of Lush Life vids. Yeah. But but this is nice because it's, uh, you know, as always, a little bit longer form and more relaxed. At least I'm feeling relaxed. I'm, I will say the one thing I've, you know, after doing this for 27, 28 weeks, um, some of that, the antsiness of like, oh, like, oh, it's long form and live. I always have to, I can't fuck up or I can't, you know, it's, it's like, oh, it's not going to be edited. And certainly like Christian, my editor, like will take out certain things if it's egregious or I completely brain fart and go on a five minute silence while I'm thinking of something. But normally <laughs> I like the idea of the podcast to be just kind of like, um, you know, stream of consciousness with just a couple of cues to kind of keep the conversation going. So the, the theory I had today was this idea that, you know, over the years, I know we have a, a, a small community um, that watches uh, our content uh, probably exclusively, I'm sure there's plenty of people that watch us together that don't even bother with my own channel, which is Beyond yeah, which is which is fine. I know there's a lot of people that watch a little bit of both, but I do think there is an allure of the dynamic between us because it just adds that dynamic that you don't have on the main channel, which is my dumb face in the camera. Um, and so I know I've seen like people on Reddit and different comments, people, oh yeah, I've watched the end for years, but I've just recently just like mostly watched Lush Life, and I'm like. Damn it, I really am fucking, I really am washed. <laughs> My wife's carrying the ship now, steering it. Um, but with that, over the years, there's, you know, I'm sure there's a bit of a, a Mrs. Lush fandom that's cropped up. You know, obviously there's, there's comments. We have a, a great community that's most of the time very positive and says lovely things, which we appreciate. But um, I know in the, the, the episodes past that we've done on this, the past two where we've talked about certain things, fitness related, lifestyle related, just different, um, uh, different areas of our life that have changed over the years. And then on our YouTube channel, we obviously did the video of kind of the weight loss stuff. So we've talked about, um, these kind of life 
these life uh, staples and journeys that we've gone through throughout the years and months. And I think there's a portion of the audience that really likes that because it resonates with them. I mean, there's obviously like the ha ha funny react, like fun moments, jokes, we laugh and have fun, but then obviously people come to the internet for a little bit of insight too, into the lives of people that they can relate to and stuff, which I think, which I think is one of the things people watch us for is because we're at the end of the day, just, but I guess like a relatable couple that's kind of just doing our thing. We're not really trying to project anything and we're not acting differently than we act off camera. That's what I was just going to say. So I think it's not only that people can relate to, but look up to, I, you know, it's very heartwarming to me, but we get a lot of comments like that. Like, wow, you guys are couple goals. And right. And it's mostly regarding the way that we interact with each other. I think it's mostly because they see how intang- like how insane of a catch you made in me. And so they're just so jealous of you. <laughs> uh, no, I, I see those comments too. And I always, I'm always, I always take pause because I'm like, you know, it's very easy on the internet through just social media, whatever to, you know, obviously see the, the, the highlight reel of people's lives. And I think more so for some couples that make content than others, like some, some really try to spit shine it and polish it and our depends on your style of content too. But no, I, I, I agree with that. And I think that it doesn't shine through cause we're trying to like, we're not trying to show people like we're not talking about our relationship. Normally when we do videos, we're just like sitting down and using the videos we watch as a prompt to, whatever to say something. And then that turns into funny little interactions between us. And then the occasional laughing fit. If <laughs> there's a fart video, obviously from my wife, for sure. Love that. Um, but yeah. And I think that that's to, for some people that's heartwarming because there is probably, uh, I'm sure a lot of people in the audience that, um, are in healthy, happy relationships and love watching it. Cause they can relate to that dynamic. And then there's on the flip side of that, people that watch, um, that, or maybe in between relationships or haven't been in one or just, you know, are having trouble finding uh, somebody they can share a life with and envy that because that's obviously one of the core kind of human intrinsic wants and desires is to, is to have that, um, to be able to share a life with somebody else. Um, and certainly times have changed and there's things are different now, but I think ultimately that is for most people, the end game is wanting to find someone you can kind of share your experience with. And I think that's, that's morphed and changed a lot over the years. We've talked a lot about the dating pool and how, Oh man, it would be scary to, to be on the dating market these days with the way things have shifted the last 20 years with online dating and dating apps and just the ephemeral nature of relationships and the kind of, you know, this idea that with the first second you run into a little bit of hardship or struggle, you can just throw it away into the trash and swipe to the next one type of thing. And hard to relate to that because I think we just, um, I mean, when we started dating, it was, that was around, but Mm -hmm. it was not nearly as progressed as it is now. Correct. Yeah. It wasn't like the primary way of meeting someone. Yeah. Which I feel like it kind of is now. If you're single and looking, that's what you do. It's all online. Which is fine because that's, I mean, because here's the deal. Like that's where people spend all their time. Like previous to the internet and social media, like people spent a lot of time socializing and out in, you know, it's not that people don't go out to bars and stuff, right? And all that stuff now, but it's just, it's a lower barrier to entry to break the ice with somebody. It's a lot harder to walk up to someone in person at a bar, a girl that you don't know, and try to say something clever and get an end and spark a, a conversation that way than it is to spam dm 300 people Mm. and see who bites you know (laughs) Mm. and that's kind of like that's kind of where it's gone but so i want i did i want to do a talk a little bit just about that dynamic and just hear a little bit from you because i know there's a lot of uh probably a lot of men in the audience that are part of the the mrs lush fandom (laughs) that want to find a mrs lush of their own someday oh And it would, you know, maybe it would be insightful for them to hear, like, from your perspective, like, some characteristics or traits that you find valuable in other men, probably things, you know, certain traits that are valuable in me. And obviously there's things that um, 
there's there's traits that are in me that are not so valuable to you and <laughs> and that's the, that's every relationship so that's totally so that's perfectly fine wow. and i have so i'll i'll hear a little bit about just that from you and then i have a few prompts too that i found from this silly article that was like 20 you know high value traits and i feel like the term high value man is such like a terminally online term like tra- like I don't know. It's yeah. uh, you know. I know what, what I mean? you mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm the, like the the Instagram guy with the suits that like is a fucking alpha male and shark, and I am a leader and a salesman. I just there's just so much cringe on the internet now. Okay. And there's there's definitely attractive traits in that pool of thought, that camp of man, but there's I think a lot more to it than just being like this shark and this killer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but so, I also want. Oh, go sorry. ahead. Sorry. We, did you want me to talk about what I like about you or just in more general, like, uh, yeah, you know what, since we're on it, let's, oh, yeah, I was going to, I was, I don't know why I was going to switch subjects. We're, we're like, we're already steamrolling and I feel good about it. Like I had it written down one way, but then I just started. I'm sorry. You're going to give an outline, I, get into the meat and potatoes and then go back to it. Let's just totally shift gears to something <laughs> completely new and then come back. I, once again, you need me here. This is why I don't, um, produce normally i just sit and talk (laughs) (laughs) got it um yeah so what so just let's like think back even like maybe now and think back to yourself maybe in like early late 2000s early 2010s like when you were you know on the market i know you there's a, a failed relationship or two similar to my situation and you know through those relationships i think one of the things that i took away from that is like you you learn very aggressively sometimes things you can't tolerate Mm -hmm. from a partner. And so that informs you moving forward where it's like, okay, that, you know, X, Y, and Z. It's like, if the first sign of that, I'm screaming in the other direction (laughs) when I'm, when I'm, you know, courting somebody new. Um, And there can be baggage that comes along with relationships like that, but they can also be learning experiences that inform your, your future choices and partners. Um, so what were, you know, what were some of the things, you know, when you were uh, on Match.com looking for- <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. I can't think back to my 20-something-year-old self, but I can kind of tell you. I mean, it, was only like, three, it was only three years ago. Why not? Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I guess I can kind of combine what I was thinking then and thinking now and what type of things would I be interested in in a man? Like what would be some top priorities? You know, I can't exactly answer for my 20 something year old self, but I can kind of combine some thoughts that I probably would have had then and what I would think now. And so times change, certainly opinions change. Yeah, but or maybe just the definition of a certain thing would change. Like self sufficiency would be a huge one for me. And back Mm. in the day, I might have said, like, I would like someone that has a job because when you're in your early 20s, like a lot of people are just finding jobs and careers at that point. Yeah. Um, I think so. I think there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of controversy online. I know about that particular fact. There's a ton of like street interview types. Like, oh, how like how much does your man need to make if you would consider? Like, it's all just bullshit. Like clickbait, rage bait, just to piss men off. Like, blah, and like spark conversation to go viral, etc. But yes, I think holding a job is probably pretty important. That said, and not to interject my own opinion, but I'm going to. Uh, if I were just from, the, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of the idea that like there needs to be some sort of minimum requirement of like salary or you're just not even going to be like looked at, you know? I agree with that. Especially if you're a little bit younger in your twenties, maybe. So Um, that's kind of where I was going with the self-sufficiency. Like, can you hold your own? Mm -hmm. And that might mean financially, like, can you pay your bills and take care of yourself at least? Yeah. But that also could be, you know, self-sufficiency can also be like day-to-day stuff. Like, do you know how to change a light bulb? (laughs) I'm not kidding you. And if you don't know how to change a light bulb, okay. Is the first thing you're going to do- Red flag? No, is the first thing you're going to do call your dad or are you going to figure out how to do it and make it happen? (laughs) Okay. I think there's something to be said for that. Being resourceful. Yeah, resourceful, Uh, self-sufficiency. What what else? Willing to learn something new. Sure, sure. Confidence, confidence is also really big. Yeah, confidence is a tough one because I think that's something that probably most guys, a lot of guys struggle with. A lot of girls do too. Yeah. And I don't, 
I've, I've thought oftentimes about how to speak on that because I think my progression as a young kid into a teenager, into an adult has been a good example of someone who didn't have a lot of confidence that was able to find it throughout his lifetime. And this realization that confidence isn't some sort of external thing you just find one day and like install it as like a SIM card into your brain and then boom, you're confident or you don't just like watch a an inspirational Instagram video with like cool backing music and like 16, like Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson quotes, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden wake up confident one day for me, confidence comes from commitment to yourself and commitment to growth and in whatever form that is. And also the ability to trust yourself. And by that, I mean, making a commitment to do something and then following through as opposed to constantly being the guy that flaps his gums and then never follows through or, you know, and it's like, if you can't, confidence comes from continually stacking up small wins for me. And I think that can be true for anybody. So it's like, there's obviously like an environmental piece growing up, the family you're raising, all these things, like there can be some insecurities physically. I like that was my f- insecurities came physically from being a heavy kid. So mm-hmm. I was kind of like the the young, I was always wanted to be the funny guy. I wanted to make people laugh because it helped me feel valuable as somebody who was very insecure uh, in my own body at the time. But I really found that like, you know, just confidence comes from positive change being like, hey, this is something that I'm not confident about that... I know I could be better at and then just making a choice to do little things every single day to try to get better at it and understanding like you're always going to fall short and fail at things, but you're always making an effort. And then over time, those can compound and all of a sudden, like the course of 12 months or two years or whatever it is, you're like, holy shit. Like you look back three years, four or five years ago and you're like, you barely even recognize that person and confidence naturally starts to show up at that point. So speaking of confidence, it's not to be confused with cockiness (laughs) cockiness <laughs> arrogance <laughs> arrogance cockiness which there's a, there's in my th- opinion is just like this fake overcompensated manufactured confidence do you think that do you think that's why i bought a truck <laughs> <laughs> so comp- no you bought a truck it's because it's badass there you go that's my girl <laughs> it's also extremely practical so i love you for that yeah 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 I- how supportive was I about the truck? Come oh, on. you were pumped all the time. You're like, you knew I, <laughs> I was like ready for it. something. Yeah, you do. You're like, <laughs> it's like sitting on the top of a fucking house when you're driving oh, yeah. that thing. It's not even <laughs> lifted yet. Um, yeah, cockiness, cockiness and, uh, excuse me, I would say confidence and arrogance are definitely um, kind of can, can, can look like the same thing sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I think confidence moves in silence most of the time. That's the way I like to think about it. Yeah. Arrogance is always the loudest person in the room, and it, and for you know we, for some girl, it's obviously every girl's taste is probably different. Maybe some girls like the arrogant, cocky asshole because there might be some cockiness under that. But I do know a lot of situations where where guys are are kind of like fiending. They're just like they're they think they're confident or they're trying to be confident, but it comes out as arrogance and cockiness to compensate for the lack that I think intrinsically deep down there. That's very, what I said. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's that fake overcompensating, like it's fake. That's it's that, fake confidence. That hardcore <laughs> sports dad that never told them they were good enough, oh you know, <laughs> like the typical trope from like nineties movies. <laughs> but there's a lot of truth to that. There is. I think if, if there's, I don't know. I have, I had the opposite problem. I was going to speak to this. Just speaking a, about, you know, typical like traits of men kind of in the same vein, you know, this confidence. I come from a a background, like a family where and my father, one of the sweetest, most wonderful men on the planet, but very gentle. You know what I mean? Like incredibly oh, gentle, absolutely not a killer. You know, and I, I mean, you know, I mean that in like the, you know, he's not the guy to get up and fucking like, he's a type B personality and what, unbelievable but i and i i so many of my best traits come from his example but Absolutely. at the same time we live in a world where i think if you want to get ahead and really get the most out of your experience you have to sometimes figure out how to be a type a and be a little bit of a killer and be a little bit aggressive 
and find ways to tap into that side of yourself that is not the people pleaser. And that's something that's always been very difficult for me because I just didn't have that around me growing up. And I, I'm be curious to hear from you. Like, obviously there's a lot of, tr you know, personality traits that I got from my dad that you appreciate and that you see in me that lends itself really well to a healthy relationship. Yes. Right. And you've said that before to me. Oh, yes. But at the same time. I've said it to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said it to the man himself. But I think at the same time, there is a level of like, you know, if you're too gentle, like if you don't have that kind of that a little bit of brashness, it can be, you know, a little bit of, and I hate the word, a little bit of alpha. I hate that word. I know. But, you know, it's just such a, but it can be, that can be a turnoff for a lot of women. Like they, sure. they're, they're, I think a lot of women need there to be a little bit of that kind of hunter gatherer barbarian inside of you yeah. in whatever way that comes out. But on the flip side of that, if that's all that's in there, that can be one of the most toxic men on the planet, abusive, you know, uncontrolled anger, low emotional intelligence, not able to reel in his emotions. And it can turn into a lot of crazy things. And it's, it sucks because those people can thrive in situations where that, those characteristics are needed you know you think about different occupations um where that type of personality excels sales law enforcement stuff like that and oftentimes unfortunately you hear stories time and time again these type of people are not great in the home front so there's got to be a balance somehow so i'm thankful for myself in my own life that i was led by an example of gentleness and gratitude and caring in, in kind of a, a, almost a servant's attitude in relationships in a way that like you need to find a way to self-sacrifice to make the other person in your life feel comfortable. And I'm not, I'm not, I mean, my, my dad set a high standard. I, I'm, I fall short <laughs> often, but on the flip side of that, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, I was able a little bit to go out on my own and and learn how to take initiative in some things too in the in the business side of things and understanding I wasn't going to be you know I was insane I just I I've always I've always had an okay job listening to my intuition and following that and it hasn't steered me wrong yet it does leave me with a lot of anxiety because I never really know what the fuck's going to be going on in like a year or three years or five years. It's just interesting to think about. And I think that's, that's the one thing I struggle with the most is I'm like, man, I could, I think I could, I think I could really be a fucking, I could, I could do incredible things, but I, I oftentimes lack the, the drive or that kind of killer instinct that's needed to, to be that type of human, because I'm just happy being kind of like a low chi, low key gentle guy. And I just turn that on as much as I have to, to create a life that I like, and then I can turn it off and <laughs> fucking chill. But this, you know, like the guys that like work their life away and they never see their family and all they can do is work and they, you know, that they become addicted to it and that's it. It's all just now it's like you make more money than God, but that's never enough. And then you never stop. Like I could never, why that would never be the life for me. I like making money and I like working sometimes, but I only do it because I want to make enough money to have my time and be around my family and chill out yeah, and do fun yeah. things. But I don't know. Like, so what What do you, in your opinion, is it easy to, I was just, the reason I spoke so long on that is because I feel like there's a lot, you know, the, this whole idea of guys are like, oh, I'm such a nice guy, but no girl, like, you know, <laughs> that whole thing. And it's always the assholes. The nice that, guy. The assholes that get all the girls, blah, blah, blah. What do you, what's your take on that? Like there is undoubtedly, is there like a level of, there is a level of attraction to that kind of guy who's like kind of the carefree badass dude that's a little bit brash? Is that just kind of an intrinsic female thing or your, your radar goes up a little bit when you see that or? That's tough. I mean, I haven't thought about like what other type of guy I'm interested in aside from you in a very long time. So it's weird to think You're about. You're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one for me, hon. I don't know. Tom Brady's kind of feminine. Oh, shit. Yeah, no. Tom's up there. Yeah, but like oh, me no, and you. Oh, no, I forgot. Would... I thought about Tom Brady for a while. So, <laughs> I was yeah. say, yeah, we always talk. That's allowed. Yeah, he's at the top of the list. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I think it's about balance. Like, there has to be a balance there. Like, there does. you can't. I don't want to be with someone who's an a-hole. And let me tell you, my yeah. my 
people I know who are with a holes are not thrilled about it. <laughs> no, no, it's difficult, but because it the, doesn't go away. But on the flip side of that, do you want to be with like a hundred and sixty pound vegan man that? Rides a street bike and wears, span vegan. wears spandex bike suits and drives a Honda Prius. <laughs> like, <laughs> is that is that going to get your juices flowing? Or like, you lost me at vegan. Eat a piece of meat. No, like, no offense. To you I guys mean, if people choose that, that, but that's not something I could handle in my personal yeah. life. I, I imagine there's women out, out there that are more like that would find more interest in the intellect side of thing. It, it just depends on the individual's preferences, I guess. My only thing is I think that beyond like preferential, I'm just thinking very like primally historically, you know, it, from the, from the beginning of, of, of hunter gathering humans, caveman, whatever, there is a, genetically there's kind of this genetic piece inside women that like no matter how many millenniums things have evolved and obviously everything's different than it was before but there is just kind of something that will be uh that will trigger that that thing in you that that makes you feel like whoa like if you see like a a, a confident like just like a fucking, like a lumberjack, blue collar, fuck, you know, just like a, no, I'm not describing it well, but like a guy who is assertive and just, um, I don't know, like, I don't want to say not an asshole though. Like you, you can be that no, way yeah. without being an asshole. And I guess that's the You problem. mentioned blue collar. And I will say there is something attractive about that because like someone who can like hands on handle something, yeah, fix something, do something, build something, make something, create in mm -hmm. that way, there is something attractive about that, yeah. A hundred percent. I think so. And I think because, you know, it's it's only within the last however many 30 years where, like, all of the jobs have shifted to, like, technology and coding and spreadsheets and, got, like, you know, taking taking the the savage man and sitting him down under blue lights in front of a screen for eight hours a day, emasculating him day after day after day, working for corporations so he can put bread on the table and there is something very respectable and commendable and, and attractive about a man who's willing to make that sacrifice to, to, to provide no matter what it is. But I, I really think there's something incredibly valuable about if you are in a, that, that kind of profession, which, which frankly I am like, I sit in front of my computer all the time. I'm not a blue collar guy. I can fix things. I, I can watch YouTube videos and figure it out resourceful. Like you said earlier, I'm, mm -hmm. I, f I feel like I'm pretty good at that, but if you're in that kind of lifestyle, like it's so imperative to me, at least to find a hobby or do something regularly that taps into that primal side of you, because I think so much of men's physiology and their innate need is not being met in the present workplace uh, standard. I think a lot of them just go and, and they just get so tired and worn out and they just go home and they try to unwind by doing more of it in front of their screens and their phones and whatever. And it's like, there's like, there's gotta be something like for me, you know, for me, it's always been obviously weightlifting and physical activity. That's obviously one of them. The last two years golf has been, as you've seen is like, is, is fun, as fun as it is, you can meme about it. And it's like, oh yeah, golf with the guys and she used to get drunk. No, it's like, it's just something physically challenging, not mm -hmm. in a hard physical way, but it's a skill that you have to develop. And competitive. It's competitive. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. And it's just something as a as a dude you can work hard on and get better at. And it's and as an a excuse woman, to spend it or not. time. Yeah, time outside. I'm sorry. Yeah, as a woman. I also I, golf. <laughs> I just I just think that kind of comp that innate need for that co competitive piece is different. I think between men and women, you know. At least certain ones. Like, I, I've i told you a million times, I'm just not competitive. Right. I don't care. Right. I still enjoy golf, though. Yeah, you do. And I enjoy golfing with you. I think... Um, That's also, like, a fun thing. It's just fun that we do it together. I agree. We picked it up together. It's nice to have a hobby that we do together that isn't work or home-related. Yeah. We needed something, dude, because a lot of, you know, most of you couples listening, you, you fall into this... <laughs> Anytime it's like, oh, we have a, oh, like the kids, we have a free night, the kids over grandma's house, or like maybe you don't have kids and you're looking for something to do. 
we're always anytime we're looking for something to do, it always revolves around either eating or drinking. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, and so like, like you just go to dinner, you eat, you have a few yeah. drinks, and then you're like, okay, or both. now what? Now what do we do? <laughs> And uh, I maybe that's maybe I'm just like it's, it's tattling on myself, like because obviously there's a, probably a million different interesting hobbies that some of you guys listening. Yes, have. I think it doesn't matter what the hobby is. It's nice that we have one together. Yeah, there you go. That's that's the thing, and it's I think it's important to have individual hobbies too. Yep. Um, but yeah, having one together has been really fun, and I mean I realize you know it's a it's a unique situation for everybody. I realize it can, it's a bit of a luxury that as a married couple with a kid that we can even find time to do that. But that being said, it's like we didn't when he was not in school, like Correct. him eventually getting to the school age is what allowed that for us because we can go in the mornings while he's in school. We mentioned this briefly in oh a last life video, but <sighs> Dave Grohl, man, I'm still not over it. Oh, I know. I don't, the only reason I bring it up, I was, I was online earlier and I saw another thing about it and I was just like, he was my bastion of hope as a rock star. Like celebrity couples, whatever. I'm sure there's still some, but when it came to rock stars, like musicians who are like notoriously degenerate mm -hmm. scumbags, I was like, Dave Kroll, he's he's the light at the end of the tunnel, man. He's the hope for people. He's a family man, he's two in the world. Married for a very long time. I forget yeah. how many years, but a while. Bunch of kids and ended up banging his, I don't know who she was. I didn't look into it because I didn't care. But what do you, what is it about famous people or like celebrities that are just seemingly incapable of long-term fidelity? I don't know. And Access this, and just this okay. feeling of invincibility, like, cause you're think you're better than other people. Yeah. I get, there's definitely an element. Uh, Access is a good one. And also this, I think if you spend enough years having millions of people adore you, mm -hmm. it's impossible not to let that, go to your head, so to speak, feed your ego. And I think even if you've learned how to act humble and remain humble in many ways, I think it may be impossible to, I don't know, not let it affect you, I guess. I don't know. It's just, it's just too bad. Cause I think and I mean, it's not to say that like, you know, non-celebrity, like it's, it's ran, like, you know, this type of thing is rampant. It's not just celebrities. It's just, they're the ones that people care to track their lives and they always make the headlines, but you know, it's just, uh, I don't know why that one hit so fucking that one specifically. Because <laughs> like, you're just a super, you were a super fan. <laughs> yeah. I always liked Dave, I, you know, Nirvana and then the Foo Fighters. I've just always thought he was a cool rock star and like a cool family guy. And then. Is what it is. But at the same time, like people are going to speculate and say what they want, but nobody knows anyone's relationship. I will say this more than Dave Grohl when t Tom Brady, when that happened, that was, that was probably more devastating for me. Cause I was like, I mean, what really? Re I, why you didn't think so? I was like, Oh, Tom, well, yeah. Cause Tom was like my idol growing up and then like, Oh, he's got a loving family and sure. The Bridget Moynihan thing happened and then whatever with Giselle, but then is like, that what you're referring to? What? When he was, when he left Bridget, Pregnant to be with Giselle? Or are no. you talking about him getting divorced? I'm talking about just him getting divorced. But I guess if that was Giselle's doing, then it was kind of him too. I don't even know. Do we know what the official no story is? No one really knows. No. But the theory is that she's banging her. She was banging her jujitsu instructor. Yeah, yeah. But also like you look at the previous few years and it was like he was going to retire and she gave him all these opportunities to be like, hey, you need to retire and pay attention to your family. I don't know if there was an ultimatum. And then eventually it got to a point, I would imagine, where it was clear that he Football was the most important thing in his life. Sure. Uh, and then she took matters into her own hands. And <clears throat> But like, Tom, if you're like, I don't know how I'd feel if you were just tumbling around with a male jujitsu instructor. Like, as much as I trust you, it'd be one thing to like, you know, have a golf coach that's a dude. Sure. If you're like on the mat throwing hands with a dude, like, Rolling around doing fucking JJ BJJ moves. <laughs> I'm just feeling a little comfortable about that, probably. <laughs> Join a women's league, all right? <laughs> and what do you know? Yeah. Uh, but, anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, we're not worried about celebrities. We're worried about normal people relationships because those are the people who who watch us and, and listen to anything we have to say. 
Um, so to wrap this segment up, I actually had this this silly uh, this uh, this silly little article that came up. It's called it's from a website called Loved Quest Coaching. This is so it's so off the Loved Quest Love Quest Coaching, and it's twenty traits of a high value man. And I don't know anything about the art the uh, the person who wrote this article or anything. I just thought it would be fun to prompt you with a couple things and see if it okay. is something that's important to you or something that's like nah, that's cheese. I forgot to mention one other important thing. Oh yeah, so I'm I mean, there's, say, a, there's obviously no, a million. I know, but I have to, I, okay. I would be not okay with myself if I didn't say it because it's that, it's actually number one, and I should have said it first. Oh boy, here we go. Hygiene, personal hygiene, and self care. Mm. Whether whatever that looks like for you, but you need to be clean. Your clothes need to be clean. Your body needs to be clean. No dick cheese, guys. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and if you're bringing me into your space, your physical home space, whatever that may be, it needs to be clean. So that it's funny because I br I briefly browsed over this and that's one of them on there and I it, I, it's very important. I to looked me. at that and I was like I so I I was like this is gonna just be put that at the top of the list right now. One. Yeah, which is so funny because when we first started <laughs> dating, like not that I was the biggest slob in the world, but the houses I lived in. Whew. From the halfway house you first found me in to then the <laughs> house found you in, <laughs> like I just rescued you. <laughs> <laughs> a little stray puppy in a halfway. It I mean, it basically did. It wasn't an actual halfway house, so that's what we call it because it you was call just, it. yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> I was, it was a, it place, was a rent a room situation. It was situation. a rent a room situation with a, a hodgepodge of random motherfuckers, and it was just a very uh, interesting place, but yeah. it was awesome for when I needed it. And then I moved into a place after that, after we'd been together for a couple months with some friends I worked with, and one of my, uh, one of my, Roommates lived on the same floor. Me, God bless him, love him to death. One of, one of my good friends. Uh, but oh boy, I mean, in any given day, you could open the door to his room, <sighs> and there would be seventeen cups, thirteen mugs, four bowls with some sort of substance in them. Fucking, I mean, we're not talking like Asmund Gold level, like hoarder, fucking neckbeard nest. But it was like you know, and we shared a bathroom and. We still joke to this day that he maybe still uses the same towel and it hasn't been one. <laughs> there was there was a period of time there was, where- There was not a lot of laundry going on. Yeah, no, there wasn't. I am curious. I want to know about this, guys. All right, guys listening and, and girls too. What's the, as a man, what is the appropriate amount of times you can use a towel after a shower and hang it up before running it through the laundry? And I don't, I don't the know. The answers you, I don't, are going to be huge on this. They're going to be massive. And I don't know your, I don't know your answer, but I know it's going to be way different than mine. If I had to think back, oh my God, if I, I think back to when I was a bachelor, it it was multi, like several weeks for like, it like it, the towel would start to be a little mildewy. Like there would like, you'd go to dry yourself and you'd be like, nope, this one needs to go. And that was the, that was how you knew you use your olfactory, you use your nose. But like you're all you're doing is cleaning a dry bo a, a clean body or you're drying a clean body. That's why that towel's there. So like, all right, it gets wet, gets dry, gets wet, it gets dry. Certainly, like it's gonna catch a little bit of grime along the way. But yeah, I mean, it must have been, it must have been probably four to five to six weeks. So you don't even have to think about this anymore because I just grab your towel and change it out for you. You guys would be so impressed by my house, <laughs> and I don't know. I, I, but so. You say and, and like I, I'm I say not immaculate me. by any means, but in terms of like cleanliness, yes. I didn't mean that as a flat. I meant that as a joke. As in, like my house, it has a refillable fridge and towels oh. that clean themselves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to think about the towel situation because no. after a couple of days, no. The, I the, grab only, it. the only time I think about it is when I go to grab it off the rack and it's gone, and I have to grab a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I usually put a new and one. I'm like, there for damn you. it! Now I have to walk a little bit wet across the floor to the closet and grab it. <laughs> Actually, you do sometimes put a new one out there for me. Uh, so what is your, like, so what's your answer for time? Okay. Like if you had to give like, it's probably three days, days? three uses. <laughs> <laughs> three days. You Tops. definitely let my towels go for like a week, week and a half. No. Sometimes. Cause here's the deal. Like after a couple of days, like you're a large man and it, you just leave it there kind of like folded upon itself. So it stays wet. And so I'll walk by and it'll get to have that stinky smell sometimes. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, it's gotta go. I am a large man. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It depends. I mean, I, I feel like I always, I, I dry it and hang it right back up. That's it. 
There's just, it's not like lying around somewhere. Like that's the problem with some dudes is like, they'll walk to the room or if you have like a community bathroom shower, like you walk in your room and then it's like laying on the bed or like on the ground for a while. And then that's a different story. But yeah, that, I guess, sorry, that all started from. Oh my gosh, that was a tangent. I know it is, but it's so funny. Personal hygiene, cleanliness. But that is, but that's something that's important to you and you know that, right? And so that's, you know, and it's, it's crazy because I, I know that there's couples out there right now that are madly in love and perfect for each other. And they're both disgusting slobs. And, and that's you know okay. what? That's okay. And they, they maybe found use the same towel for a month. <laughs> and the same towel together. And they use it after they showers. Share, yes. They use it after sex. It's just the one towel that they use together for everything. They use it to clean up after spills. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they're happy. And that's all and that that's matters. that's okay. But my standards for cleanliness are high. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, but I, I have, I, you know what? I know I'm not the only one. When we first started dating, I, I had no idea how important it was to you and you were good about not being aggressive or weird about it then. I'm sure you like said things. In, like I would, I remember back to when we, I, n- knowing you now, knowing what I know about you now and how well I know you and thinking back to when we first started dating, I can only imagine the thoughts that were going through your head. When you- <laughs> but listen, there's no question that it's gotten more intense over the years. Like I wasn't always as bad as I am now. Like I was renting apartments and things like that. And so I would do my best to keep up with what I could for, you know, living with roommates. So that's developed more for you. It's gotten more intense as I've had my own home, my own space that I'm responsible for having a kid and a a you (laughs) that I'm responsible for. (laughs) An older kid. (laughs) It's definitely gotten more intense. Okay. All right. Good. Good, because if you were if you were at this level now when we first started dating, I don't know if we ever would have worked out. No, but I remember dying inside when I had to take a shower at that apartment. That's right. I felt was. dirtier after taking a shower. <laughs> that's right. And I was like, never again. I remember when I the first time I cleaned that bathroom after I moved in there, it probably hadn't been clean in like a year. Yeah. It was. Uh, I needed a hazmat suit. <laughs> it was like it was something else. All right, hit us, hit us with. Anyways, the list, dude. yeah, sorry. I'd like to think I've gotten a little better. I'm certainly still uh, always living in your shadow, but I try my best because, out of respect for you, it's oftentimes I fall short. But occasionally I make the bed, and it's like a six out of ten, and that makes me feel good that I tried. <laughs> we actually have a rating. We have a, we have a rating have a system for the for, bed making because he wakes up after me, much yeah. after me. <laughs> So he's responsible for making the bed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just it. yell down the stairs, zero out of 10, you yeah. didn't even try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no, th- no throw pillows, six out of 10. <laughs> Fucking blankets not pulled tight on each corner, five out of 10. I did out a ten. I did a ten out of ten not too Once. long ago, and your fucking your socks blew off. You couldn't fucking believe. It. You were talking about it all afternoon. You're like, oh my! You walked into the room. You nearly shat yourself. The way you did the accent blanket was like more perfect than I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I just have to experiment sometimes. I'm, I'm gonna like. I'm gonna fuck her world up with this bed make right now. She's not gonna know it hit her. <laughs> but I can't just do that all the time because then you'd get too comfortable. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but you have to notice how it makes me react and how joyful I become and how yes, happy and what a good mood it puts exactly. me in. Exactly. That's why I do it twice and like, a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it goes a long way. I notice it. I acknowledge it to you. Yes. So. But I just don't want to do it too much to where you would take it for granted. That's all. Oh. Yeah. I would, you know, I'm just smart. You know, you're just a little, a little bit of. So should I stop doing some things for a short I'm time? I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. I'll try to be better. Anyways, he commits him to himself and others. This is one. This is very broad. Yeah. I feel like that one's, this is, we're, we're on this list now, guys. Sorry. We just, we, we, we we're on a, the list. A little fun tangent. When it comes to himself, his betterment, his career, his friendships, he plans on the weekends. He operates on full commitment. Yeah. I think I like that. I like Pete. I mean, it's more just about being a man of your word. Like when you say you're going to do something. Yeah. Follow through. Everybody knows or has that friend that's always like, yeah, I'm going to be there. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. And then zero out of 10 times they ever show up. Yeah. And that's fine. You probably still love that person. They might be a great friend, but that just sucks. So it's something I think any individual can be better at. The problem really stems from people just wanting to be people pleasers. And it's like if you, so many, so many people will get invited or asked to do something and immediately know that they don't want to or are not going to do it. And they'll be like, oh, that sounds great. Yeah, we'll think about it. I'll let you know. I have so much respect for people that are just like, nope, can't, sorry, or nope, don't want to. Like right away, they just don't care about you, but they're going to be honest with you. I think that's Mm. such an admirable trait because I struggle with that sometimes. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Love that. He loves putting forth effort for a woman. So far, this list is a little bit gay. (laughs) Just kidding. Yes, of course, you have to put forth effort for your woman. How important that is to you, though? 
This is important. About you. It's important. I'd say a little bit goes a long way. We just had this conversation. That's what it is. About how happy I get when you make the bed nice. That's right. We kind of just I, I, went over this And that's already. the tiniest little thing. Yeah. I mean, truly, making a bed, that's not like a big thing. But the fu- but this is the thing. This is what the thing. It, it it's it's not about big things. Exactly. It's, it's so all, it, it goes a long, long, long yeah, way. Yeah, like guy, like guys will hear that and be like, "Oh, like I got to buy her flowers and spend all this money." It's nope. like, no, no, no. It ha- it's it's. I'm going to tell you right now, like women, like oh, you bought flowers and chocolates and put rose petals on the bed for Valentine's Day. Like, cool. No one cares. Expected. You're like part of the fucking retail machine. Congratulations. If you do something that shows you were thinking about her when you didn't have to be thinking about her or weren't, ex- or weren't expected to be thinking about her. That's when it matters most. Yes. Yeah. Not when it's like, oh, you know, and, and it's not cool. Flowers, chocolates, whatever you want. That's nice. That's fun. It's cool to celebrate that. But it's like, uh, Hey, a random day of the week and you did something that meant you had to take an hour of your time to do this for, yeah, it's huge stuff. Some of that yeah. plays into people's love languages though. Sure. Yeah. Which is different for everybody. And so maybe some people would rather have flowers and chocolate. I'm more of an acts of service kind of girl. So I would rather you do something that showed me your thinking of me or cared about how I felt. Yeah. Yep. I think everybody struggles with that and could do it more often. I know oftentimes I have grandiose thoughts of some certain things I could do. And I'm just very easily wrapped up in a singular thing I'm hyper focused on at the time and forget to do simple things that could make a difference in a positive way in our relationship. And I think sometimes you probably notice depending on how stressed I am or how things are going at work or whatever, where I'm at in my life, like certainly like where I'm at in my own life and my fitness journey, how I'm taking care of myself that probably translates into how I'm thinking about you and other people in my life as well. And you probably notice that different phases over the years where I'm a little more reclusive and less available or there. And then other times where maybe I'm a little better at it, but all right. Number three, he makes plans and follows through. So I feel like we touched on that one with, he commits to himself and others, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. You don't need when, to be so repetitive. Ugh. I know. It's a little, like I said, I don't know. It's just like some stupid Google list. And I just think it's fun. <laughs> yeah. If you make, if you say you're going to do something, you do it. Easy peasy. He calls and doesn't rely solely on text. <laughs> oh gosh. No, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Don't call me unless it's an emergency. Quite the opposite. For my right? Wife, for my wife. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe it depends. It might, sure, it depends on where you're at in your relationship. Okay. I mean, we all remember the days, us old mother, you know, us old motherfuckers like, <laughs> in middle school, and you sit on the phone with your, your crush for four hours, right? You have to call the landline, though, and ask their mom. That's right. And you got to, you better Hi, hope you have is that. Is James home? Oops. You got to hope you have that extra long coily cord so you can like bring it into the other room so your parents can't hear you or whatever. <laughs> like shut it in the door. I called you James. These days? Oh my goodness. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends. But once you've been married and together forever, it's like, if it's important, yeah, we'll call, talk about it. But I'm going to see you otherwise. But yeah, we're like, you're just, we're just texting all day long. Like if things going. It's I don't agree with that. But you're thinking, I'm thinking about people who are dating. I don't think that's important. I'd be surprised if people I would, agreed I would be, with that. I would be curious what the general sentiment on that was. Most people don't want to chit chat on the phone, I don't think. If you're planning on like seeing the person regularly for dates or whatever, where depending where you're at in the relationship. I think it can be valuable. Like if you're, if you want to, here's the thing. Like if you're at a, a pivotal point in kind of a courting scenario where it's like, you want to take a girl out and ask her on a date, love the idea of giving her a call, being direct. Here's what I want to do. Let's do this. I had this idea. Would you like to go with me? As opposed to texting. I think that I, th- but I think in a, in a weird way that I think that shows initiative and that shows confidence. But I think we've gotten to a point now where people are so averse because we're so, accustomed now to everything being very easily avoidable. Sure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, if, if you text, it's like, you don't have to respond right away. You don't have to think in your feet. It's nothing. It's easy. Right. It's fucking basic. It's blah. And so we got used to that. And there's a convenience to that. And there's a greatness to that in many scenarios. But I think there is an element where it shows some importance and some, some assertiveness where that can be good. And that might actually mean something to some women and it could be a turn off to others. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Much like Jehovah's Witnesses showing up at my house, I wish they would just text me <laughs> instead of showing up at my Careful, door. Careful, they'll get you on their mailing, uh, their text list. <laughs> yeah, they will. 
Uh, he is a great conversationalist. Mm. Mm. I mean, my husband can talk to himself for hours and 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 hours. I do I usually have on no this podcast. There. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I bring you on to prove it. Wow. Sometimes I can't get a word in. I know. I'm I kidding, know. I'm I try, but I just have so many intelligent, smart things to say. I just can't I know. Help myself. I'm and kidding. you love to mansplain. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mansplain. Mansplain's not a You are very term. well spoken. I'd be doing, I'm a little bit jealous. That's it. A little bit jealous. So <laughs> I'd be doing the same thing if there was a man sitting next to me and it wouldn't be mansplaining. It would just be me talking a lot. Yes. I do. I've try, I try. I've tried to get better at not talking over you on Lush Life videos because mm -hmm. definitely I struggle with that. When I like, I'm just very like, when something comes to my head, I want to, bleh, I think I've gotten a little bit better. Yeah. Um, I certainly, I remember I, I used to get shit on in the comments, like maybe let your wife talk once in a while. But like, I was coming from years of doing it myself. So I, I know. Uh, you know, I always felt like I had to, the second something relevant or witty or funny came, like I had to get it out because that's just, I was always carrying it. But when you have a partner in crime, especially one that like is very much more precise with when she chimes in. Yes, that's true. I don't want to stifle that. So no, I've tried because to... I might lose it. <laughs> <laughs> true story. Um, he dresses and grooms himself impeccably. And I'm not crazy about the wording on that. No. I don't think you need to be dressed impeccably. So it says the byline is it has zero to do with designer labels and $300 haircuts, mostly with self-love, self-care, and having an eye for style. Eh, I think that if you have your own unique style or however you like to dress... I don't care if it's comfortable, casual, athletic, whatever. I think that the cleanliness of it is more important to me. Definitely. And I think I think maybe more so intention, intentionality. Sure. And, you know, the self-care aspect of it as opposed to like, oh, you might look a little quirky, but, you know, you're confident that way or you do it because it, that's how you feel good. Like, as opposed to just, you know, being a disastrous, like, Shot in, I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot around that. But again, like it, when, that, the way that's worded, it makes you think like, oh, like you have to wear a suit five days yeah, a week. Exactly. Like, <clears throat> no, no. You can look nicely groomed in a in a sweatsuit. You know what I mean? We dress up for special occasions. I was going to say, I'm ninety percent sweatpants yes. uh, in t-shirts, and it doesn't bother me one bit. You work from home. We're at home that's most it. of the time. I wear it well sometimes. There. That said, there are often occasions where you're like, wow, you really just went into the closet and decided to pick everything that clashed today, huh? And I'm like, I think it looks good. And what I mean by that is I can't tell. <laughs> but thank you for letting me know. And then, yes, if you're horribly mismatched or <laughs> uncoordinated, I will be sure to let you know. And then you just shake your head as I walk out the door and I'm like, I, See you I later. come to expect it at this point. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> You'll tell me that. I'll be like, all right, cool. Thanks. See you later. Walk out the door and go to the store. Yeah. <laughs> he smiles a lot and is a positive person. Okay. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to be with a Debbie Downer. Hello. A hundred percent. That's like, but uh, yeah. We all have people in mind. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We all know that person. There's nothing. Yeah. There's, Woe is me. There's nothing worse than a wet blanket. Oh my God. My life's such a struggle. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Fucking. Yep. Yeah. He doesn't chase. He attracts. You know about that one. I mean, that. Th this is again, this is kind of the dating scene. It's a little yeah, cheese weird. for me. It's like you're not showing up on the hunt. That's That comes down to, I think that comes down to confidence and a little yeah. bit of, yeah. Yeah. I think it's okay to be assertive, but chasing is not a word I would want to use. Exactly. Chase and tail. Not in today's yeah. climate. <laughs> yeah, not allowed anymore. He understands a woman of value can choose. What does that mean? It means he understands, I don't know what that means. It means he understands that like when he's dating a woman, like even if she shows interest, like, I, you know, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, we went on a date, so sorry, you're stuck with me now. <laughs> right. <laughs> or I guess it says he doesn't, you know, he never lets rejection get to him. He doesn't turn into a six-year-old boy whining and insulting a woman if she rejects him. Okay. I wouldn't care at that point because I would have already rejected him. <laughs> that's what I mean. Well, I guess that's the point. And, and that is true. There is, I mean, that that's... Now you're talking incel behavior when like people that can't take rejection, like nice yeah. guys, and then a girl doesn't like them and it turns into But I'm such a, a nice guy. Oh, I'm just the nicest guy though. You just only like asshole. Well, you're just fucking weird, dude. I just don't like you. That's fine. Move on to the next. His car and his home are tidy. There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Doesn't have junk and trash in his car. His home is in order. Toilets are clean. The bed is made. He likes his surroundings to be uncluttered. Yes, yes, and yes. For Mrs. Lush. If you that's, want to find a Mrs. Move Lush. That to the top of the list. That's number one. I'm sorry, all you streamers and gamers out there that have neckbeard nests, but you got to get the fucking. Get the crumbs out of there. The Nobody th wants to see them. Get the three-month-old cockroach-infested takeout containers out of the gaming space if you're yes. trying to land a baddie. Okay? Mm -hmm. Unless your baddie is also a slug, in which case, happily ever after yeah. in a den of roaches. Blech. He's fun. I mean, yeah, everyone Duh. wants somebody fun. There's just, there's a lot of variables around that. Like people can have. Everyone's idea of fun is a little different. Two people that we think are not very fun could have a lot of fun together doing stuff we don't think is fun, you know? So it's just, there's a compatibility piece to that. You know? Yeah. He's clear on his intentions. I like that. Yeah. That's like, you can communicate and articulate what you want and are looking for in what that your, relationship. Yeah. What your desires are. You know, I like that. That's definitely important. That The next one is he communicates clearly and effectively and makes his standards known. There you go. Absolutely. I think I think that's so important. I think maybe the problem for a lot of guys is they don't really know what their standards are or what their I know they don't know what to communicate because they don't know what their values are. I think that can be a that can be something that can be one of those things that you need to work out yourself before it's even time to find a party, you know, all the all the, the meme of like, oh, I just gotta work on myself. That's always been an excuse over the years for people that are like, want to break up or, you know, or dating. It's not and you, like, it's, it's not me. working out. Yeah, the oldest, mm -hmm. not you, it's me. I need to work on myself. It's like, okay, bro. <laughs> He's well-mannered. Um, That's important, yeah. Oh, yeah, in our household, on. Oh, well, I guess everyone's definition of that would be a little different. I know, no, I I, I, I think I know where you're going with it, but. I'm thinking more about how he treats people. People in public and 100%. yeah, I like that. Yeah, you know well I mannered. Mean. Yeah, I agreed. Like, it's fun. Yeah, laughing at farts in your home is cool, but you're not ripping farts out of the table around other people. You treat service staff with respect. Yes, that all, all the above. Yeah, I think it's funny. I mean, I, I've read this in a lot of places, and I think it's very true. But you can really you can learn so much about someone's character by how they treat people that they don't stand to gain anything from, and that same point is essentially applies to service customer service staff, whether you're in a restaurant or you're dealing with a teller somewhere, how you treat those people is really a direct indication of your character as a human. Mm -hmm. And there's no bigger red flag in my opinion than seeing someone treat a person like that, like shit for no reason. Like there's obviously situations where things can get a little heated or verbal over a disagreement. But you know, I remember when I <clears throat> heard this is maybe a stupid example, and I'm sure this happens all the time in like celebrity Hollywood, blah, blah, blah. But I heard a story about James Cordone, how he was like an absolute ripping cunt to someone who didn't deserve it. Like in a certain, like just a, a, a selfish, like pathetic little piss boy and like whining about dumb shit at a restaurant. And I was like, I will never in my life look at him the same again, ever. Yeah. I used to think some of his bits were funny and now I can't even look at him without wanting to fucking. And what do you know? I feel like he disappeared off the Hollywood map. What the fuck? Where did he go? He was like the late night host. And then he I don't did. know. Does, is his show done with? I think it's been gone for a while. Oh. I mean, carpool karaoke was huge. Yes. Like he was huge for yes. a minute. Yes. He was everywhere. Yes. And now he he's had like, everybody on the show. A hundred percent. And now we like disappeared. I mean, I'm sure he made his money or whatever, but yeah, fuck James Gordon. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He knows how to seduce a woman. All right, fuck off. I don't know. That's... <laughs> How do you feel about the word seduce? I feel like that if I were to if I were to put into words how I was able to land you, seduce would not be on the list of words I would use. I would agree with that. <laughs> seduce. It's like I feel like I it's a know. negative connotation. It, it, to yeah, that it's word. like what are you trying to like trick or lure someone <laughs> yeah, into something? Right. I don't know. Yeah, that it's not gonna do it for me. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's an easier way to like He's smooth, charming, and sexy. He asks questions and takes an interest in the woman he's with. He wants to know what she reads, what her fears are, who helped her in a time of crisis, who she's helped. That's a little aggressive. Okay. Calm down. I think I think he knows how to be interested in what a I think I think it's important to want to be interested in what your girl has to say. Like there's nothing worse that than someone who just only talks about themselves at all times. Yeah. It can be wonderful to be with somebody that wants to draw you out and hear about you. But 
again, some people don't like talking about themselves in a little garden. That's fine. So you have to kind of play that by ear. Um, or you can just seduce them with roof and all. What? That's what I don't know. I just hear the word seduce and it feels so dirty to me. I yeah. Don't know. But even maybe that's not, maybe that's not fair to that word. Maybe that's not what it means. He locks down the next date before the current one ends. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. Is that? I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's just one way for him to show his level of interest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it goes well, then I, there's not nothing wrong. With I'm definitely it. against the whole like three day rule that use people used to talk about. I don't know if they still do like, Oh, you can't text someone for three days after That's a date. such a farce. Yeah. Like I, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm too old to be playing games. Come uh, on now. hundred percent. Yeah. If it's like, Hey, if things you're taking go something out, seriously, let's hang out again. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Easy. He's in touch throughout the day. That, uh, to me, that totally depends on where you're at in your yes. relationship. Like, you're dating, you, whatever. You had one date, and he's like, telling, oh, I'm at the library right now thinking about you. It's like, hey, buddy, relax, okay? Uh -huh. let's, let's, I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When having cocktails, he gets her water. <laughs> what a weird one to be on the list. He doesn't peer I'm pressure. I'm more mad at the person that made the list. He doesn't peer pressure her into drinking more. He's a mature, mature gentleman, not a frat boy. It's funny because- you always like, so as you've gotten older, you drink less and less now. Oh yeah. And, um, which is great. Cause you, I mean, you just have such a great handle on your own personal limits around things like that. Mm -hmm. Your own health. And you know, when you're hungry, when you need to eat before you get hangry, <laughs> <laughs> right? Drink is one of those things. You just, uh, and that's, that's very commendable. I have a lot of respect for that. I was going to I was going to try to get into a little bit of that in this podcast, but we've been talking so much about relationships we're not going to. I'll just have to you have you back. You want to talk about my hangriness in the next episode? Uh, just more about like day-to-day -day lifestyle of Mrs. Lush, like what's a normal day look like for sure. you from, you know, getting your steps and exercise and your food and like how that's changed over the years from when you were a nurse and when you were a little bit heavier to where you are now, post-Jackson. You've just, <clears throat> I know a lot of people are super interested in that. Sure. So I'll definitely uh, have to have you back on if you would have me as a co-host. I might once make again. you record during the daytime. But oh yeah, we'll do it at nine a.m. I'm willing to be <clears throat> here. <laughs> I don't mind at all. He shows the right amount of P PDA. How do you? I, I'm trying to remember when we first dating. If we didn't, we did like we did some hand holding. We like a little bit of yeah. But like yeah, I just nor normal affection sure. touches, little little hand hold. But there's uh, yeah, there's nothing cringier than a couple that's just obnoxiously all over each other when they're out with yeah. friends or yeah, it's just weird. Agree. It's just weird. Yeah, no, it's not super common. No, uh, and especially when both you're people just, have to be especially, comfortable. Especially when you're old and married and around <clears throat> other old and married couples to see a handhold or a kiss is a fucking is a, is a rarity. So. But it's but it exists. <clears throat> but yeah, for younger couple, yeah, it's uh, is what it is. He seeks to understand women and doesn't bail at the first show of emotion. What do you want me to say to that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that speaks to the larger <clears throat> trend of, I think we mentioned at the very beginning of, you know, bailing on the first show of struggle. In this case, they say emotion, but I think a lot can depend. Like if you spent, like if you had, I think if you go on a few dates and you feel like there's some chemistry there. <clears throat> and you see some potential. Yeah, I think some people do have the tendency, the, f the first sign of, uh, I want to say the first red flag or the first question mark of like, oh, this is difficult or we have a first disagreement. I think some people are like, oh, the, the illusion of perfectness is ruined. And all of a sudden it's like on to the next. Yeah, you got to find yeah. the next guy. And it's like the reality is, <clears throat> no, it's good to maybe get through some of that early on, some of these disagreements and have that. But it all depends on the severity of it and what it's about. There's obvious red flags. And like we said earlier, like deal breakers. That once you've had some experience in relationships, you know if those things come up again, the obvious signs that point to this, that like, okay, that is that is a deal breaker and we're going to have to move on because that's... But yeah, I guess, I mean, like, as far as for men, I guess there's a bit of a meme of like men don't don't want to hear about women's emotions or whatever, but I don't know. I don't think that's true. I think if it a guy's into be. a girl, he's he'll be willing to talk and learn about her and hear about her. Yeah, it's just not realistic to have a... <laughs> Comes with the territory. One-way street relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Comes with the territory. A lady's going to vent a little bit. She's going to tell you about some shit. She's going to gossip. She's going to talk about some shit you don't give a singular fuck about, and you're going to sit there and smile and act interested. 
Okay. And you're going to be like, oh, no way. That happened on that show. I can't believe it. What happened next? <laughs> if you truly like her, you will. And I've learned too in our relationship that not to like fake head nod and fiend interest, but like you do have to learn as you learn more about your partner and what's really important to them. Even if it's something that's not important to you at all, it needs to become important to you because it's important to them. And that, yeah. I mean, that's, that's been the hardest thing for me again, to harp, not to, to go back to this kind of central, uh, uh, the central point of, uh, you know, cleanliness and tidiness and all these things. We, we make jokes about like our differences in that nature and stuff like that. But that is one of the things I would say in our marriage of, you know, almost go almost a decade, couple of, couple of years from a decade that has probably been the point of a point of contention. Sometimes it doesn't been as bad lately, but I got to, and, you know, it, it's easy to be like, oh, well, like, no matter what I do, it'll never be enough, like all these things. And on the flip side, it's like, I want to feel validated because I feel like maybe I'm starting, I'm doing better than I normally am. So there just has to, that's a little bit of a push and pull, but everyone's going to figure out what works for them in that arena. But for me, it just realized like, all right, even though I'll, I would use the same towel for five days or I would leave clothes on the floor, this, I wouldn't clean up these dishes or do that, like, and I still forget to do it all the time and I could be better at it, but I try to treat it like something that's important to me just because I know it's important to my wife. And she's probably sitting there rolling her eyes like, well, are you, are you clearly, <laughs> really? Because <laughs> I haven't noticed yet. But I'm just saying on the record, <laughs> what's important to you, what's important to your spouse should be important to you, at least to the point of like being aware of it because you know it's important to them. Right? Depends on what it is too, but I just, I don't, wouldn't you think so? There's, I imagine there's things that I find important that you don't care at all about that you at least try to act interested in, or maybe not. You're pretty bad at feigning interest when you're not interested. <laughs> when I come home, I'm talking about something. I try to happened, understand when you talk about crypto and I'm like, wee, it's all over my head. <laughs> yeah, your eyes just glaze over immediately. I'm like trying to process it and I'm like, you start, wow. You start to like short circuit. You can and keep talking a bit. and I'm listening. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. So that's, I mean, ultimately, uh, I'm not, we're not relationship coaches, but I just thought <laughs> it would be fun to go through. This list was very mediocre. I liked our conversation previous to it. And I think a lot of the things we talked about previous to this kind of touched on some of these more. Yeah, cliche, some of them are a little cheese. Some of these more cliche things. Um, And I don't really have a lot of wise parting words. I just know that, <laughs> you know, whatever you're doing out there, whether you're sitting next to your loved one or you're going through a tough time or you're single and lonely and looking, you just got to keep waking up and fighting the good fight. And, and I think it always starts with, for me, even in my marriage, like when things are, are, are going tough, like it always starts with the pillars, the core things in my life that really matter to me that I know take care of myself and help with my mental health that can allow me to be there and be present for the people in my life that matter to me. And it's like, if you're not working on taking care of yourself, it's going to be impossible to try and be there for the ones that rely on you. At least that's the way I think about it. Would you agree with that a little bit? A lot of truth to that. Yeah. That's why I work out every morning so uh, I can be seen for you people the rest of the day. Yeah, I know. And I, th I feel like for, I'm curious how you feel about that f as someone who never really had that as part of your routine for most of your life up until your 30s. And then you kind of found this new paradigm that I would imagine, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but completely uh, kind of like transformed in some ways, like the way you take care of not just yourself physically, but mentally, like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's as much of a, of a way of like mental health self-care as it is. Am I working out? Yeah. Oh, I'm physically and mentally addicted to it. <laughs> I, no, I'm not kidding. Like I know I'm laughing, but it's very true. Yes. I'd be hitting myself over the head with a frying pan if I didn't get my workout in that I had intended on doing. Doesn't mean I work out every single day and No, you're healthy about it. I have re recovery. Yes. Depending on how what my body needs. But but I I I'm just observing in in the same boat as you. Like the I feel like the you're the the word addiction is 
is tough because there's a negative connotation to that, but like you're, you're not like addicted to the feeling of like being out of breath or like whatever. It's, I think it's, it's all encompassing. You get so um, addicted to kind of just the overall feeling of wellness and how you feel because of being consistent at it. Sure. Right. Or maybe you just are a masochist and like the pain. Of, <laughs> no, no, oh, definitely yeah. not. Definitely not. But yeah, that that's, that's what it always is for me. And there is, there it almost, it, the addicted to the endorphins because there is an element to like that feeling, that kind of high you get, that feeling you get. People call it the runner's high, obviously lifters and anyone who's does something super athletic, you feel that dude because it, it releases endorphins. It makes you feel good to do something oh, yeah. hard. And once you get past kind of that initial difficult period of coming up the inertia to do something like that, yeah, you really do start to get addicted to that feeling it gives you. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, if you're going to be addicted to anything, there's a lot of vices to have. That's one of the better ones. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I'd be happy to talk more about it when we get yeah, kind of yeah, more yeah, into yeah. it. And, you know, next time I'm on, I would definitely get into detail with, yeah. I, don't, I don't feel uncomfortable. Ooh, I don't feel uncomfortable about that at all. Excellent. I want to know, and I want to know, like, what's a normal day like for Mrs. Lush, like your morning routine? Like, what have you, what's it look like these days compared to a few years ago since you've had a kid? Because I know so many people, a lot of the comments over the years when we've done Q and A's or people ask, there's so many moms out there that are just really curious about what's worked for you, stuff like that. We've mm -hmm. touched on it in previous episodes yeah. a little bit. But Get into the nitty gritty. I think every couple months Might it's- be kind of- Sound kind of boring to a lot of people, but yeah, I'll, I'll go but there. That's why we're on this podcast, because we just get to talk about what matters to us, and some people like it. I don't think it's going to get us on Joe Rogan anytime soon, but... <laughs> I'm perfectly okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, yeah, man, this was fun. Thank you so much, sweetheart, for being on. And thank you guys for listening. And Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, this is just such a wonderful reprieve for me to just get to sit down and draw you out a little bit and do and just talk over you half the time because I'm so used to talking on my own on this podcast. Uh, but we hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. And um, we can't wait to see you in the next one. I'll be back. All right, appreciate it. Peace. <laughs>